Praise the Lord. We come to you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to our programs in JCC Malindi. We are committed and we are not going to give up to speak to your life until when this thing pandemic called Corona is over you will have a reason to celebrate the victory of Jesus. I love you. Now because everything that goes has a spirit this called Corona pandemic is an evil spirit and it is using people who propagate about it with a negative message a message that makes you threatened frightened it's like when you feel like sneezing you have corona if you feel like coughing you have corona if you feel some a bit of headache you have corona if you like you have lo lost your your voice like mine it is corona so the attention has been diverted parents have no time with their children people have got no time with their friends they are always conscious of corona it is a spirit of the devil and it is a spirit that inflicts fear a spirit that releases fear to people and i'm here today in the name of jesus to let you know something that is more stronger than corona we are going to deal with the book of acts of apostles how how to deal with corona the book of acts of apostles we are reading from verse chapter 4 chapter 4 of acts of apostles we are reading from verse 15 but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves saying what shall we do to these men for indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it but so that it spread no further among the people let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus but Peter and John answered and said to them whatever it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God you judge for we cannot but speak the things which you have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what has been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had was performed. Now, can we move again to Acts of Apostles chapter 8? Just two verses here. The Bible says in verse 1, Now Saul was consenting to his death. That is Stephen. And at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea, Samaria, except apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to the prison. This is what the Bible is teaching us. The early church faced 
challenges just as the current church is facing. The Bible is teaching about several people that have been mentioned here. There was the council of the elders. The men who matter in Jerusalem. There was the uprising of a church. This church was a composition of the few disciples of Jesus. And now to make the long story short. In chapter 3. The Bible is speaking about Peter and John who are the key leaders of the, of the church. They were going to the temple to pray. It was the hour of prayer. And they were going to the temple. Now listen. Now listen. The church, I mean the building, is a place sacred, set aside for prayer. The church is supposed to go to the place sacred set aside for prayer it is our responsibility to go to the church and pray now guys who don't know the power of prayer they think chloroquine is stronger than prayer but the truth is Prayer is stronger than any weapon. It's the most powerful weapon than anything the world have ever seen. Only those people who don't pray do not know the effects of prayer. Now when Peter was going in chapter 3, he encountered with a cripple. The cripple was an old man over 40 years. He has been there at the gate. Gate called Beautiful Gate. He was begging for arms. Now let me assume this. Some guys owned him. This is what people do. When they are poor people, where they are blind people, when Peter came and John, they said to him, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we shall give you. And Peter said, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. That was the beginning of this trouble. Because the man stood and the man entered in the synagogue in the temple and when the man entered there the service was disrupted. Why disrupted? People were shocked. Here is a man who have never walked. Now he's jumping and dancing and praising God. What happened? So the news was spreading in Jerusalem. And the impact of that miracle was making the church grow. And the religious world did not want to see the church grow. They put conditions that the church should not grow. So when this miracle happened, the news spread and the leaders of religion were losing control of Jerusalem. So they wanted to stop Peter and John and the rest of disciples. 
not to do it again. So we have seen the story here that they called them before the council. They grilled them before the council. And Peter and John were male fishermen. And Peter and John were just ordinary people. But Peter and John were men who have been with Jesus. Now the Bible says, when they could not find anything, the Bible says, the Bible says, Peter, they threatened them. That is, the council threatened them. They said, if we don't do something about these people, we are going to lose the grip of Jerusalem. So let us threaten them. So they threatened them. Whatever words they used, I don't know. But there are things that are done to release threats and fear. Like when two people, three, eight people are in the church. And the people are clobbered with tear gas. It's a threat. Now, let me say this. We, the church, are not that kind. In the book of Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is prevailing. The church cannot be threatened. The church cannot be intimidated whatsoever. Nobody can threaten the church. Nobody has that power. We the church are stronger because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I want to present to you this message. I want you first of all know that fear is a spirit. And it uses some people in position to speak words. It can use a doctor to tell you you have got only three days to live. It can use a, a politician. It can use anybody. Fear is a spirit. Anything that makes you stop what you are supposed to do because you are afraid then you know you are under fear. If you are supposed to give, but you are afraid, then you know you are under fear. If you are supposed to pray, but you can't pray because you are afraid, then you know you are under, under attack. Now, this is the spirit. How did the early church overcome it? The early church was so bold to be bold is to stand tall when everybody is laying down to be bold is to advance when everybody is retreating to be bold is to speak out your mind when everybody is quiet to be bold I command the spirit of boldness into your life. Boldness as a reward. And the Bible says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The church should not be intimidated. Instead, the church must be bold. Bold because of what we know. Bold because of what we believe. Bold because where you are, we are going. Paul, one day there was a prophecy to Paul and a true prophet of God came and he came to Paul and he took the belt of Paul and tied himself his hands and his legs 
and he prophesied and he said the Holy Spirit is saying the owner of this belt when he goes to Jerusalem the Jews will arrest him and bind him and hand him over to Gentiles and everybody believed Agabus was a true prophet prophet Agabus was a God fearing man he speaks the future as it is today so what happened the brethren told Paul don't go to Jerusalem but Paul was bold he knew what would happen to him when he goes to Jerusalem because prophecy have said but he said don't break me my heart because fear comes to break your heart fear comes to break your morale fear comes to destroy your, your, your impact David said I shall not be afraid I will not fear I shall not fear evil I shall not fear evil men Jeremiah was told by God don't fear their numbers don't fear their, their faces so fear is eliminated the moment you know who you are you fear by forgetting to know who you are but when you know you who you are Jesus said I will show you whom to fear fear he who can destroy the body and can take your soul and throw it into the lake of fire that one is the one to fear if one after killing you can do nothing about your soul don't fear him if one can put you in a prison but can do nothing more than that don't fear him fear is of the devil the book of John says fear has torment if you become fearful you get tormented in the inside of you. Out of fear, you develop even stomach ulcers. Out of fear, you develop high blood pressure. Out of fear, you tremble. Out of fear, you run away when nobody is chasing you. Let me tell you, the disciples said, we shall not keep quiet. They were told, keep quiet. They said, we shall not keep quiet. We know you can arrest us. We know you can throw, throw us into jail. We, all th we know all those things. But one thing we still know. Our God is able. Our God is powerful. So they took Peter and John and locked them in, the, in a prison because they didn't listen to the threats. And the angel of God went out there and bring them, bring them out and bring them back to the church. Not their houses, the church. And now here, I want to tell you people, there is something unique with the otters. And the church is an altar of God. And let me tell you, brethren, don't avoid it. We are not saying we are assembly. I'm not telling you we are assembly. I'm telling you don't avoid the church. Be available. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Run away from fear. Overcome fear. And this is what I'm telling you. When they arrested Paul and Silas and threw them into a prison, God went there. The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph in a prison. The good thing is this. Jesus shall not leave you nor forsake you. Jesus will always help you. Jesus will always fight for you. Jesus will always uplift you. Jesus will strengthen you. And I want to pray with you. 
Because I know the Lord has spoken to your life. I want to pray with you. I just want to offer a prayer for you. If you have been fearful, I remember the story of Gideon and over 21,000 people ready to go to battle. And God said, these people are many. A number was reduced. After that, God said, these people are still many. Let the fearful go back home. God will not work with people who are fearful. God will not bless people who are fearful. God will not manifest himself to a fearful people. You must expose yourself. Come out from your hiding. Expose yourself. Now it is 29th of this month. They are remaining only one day. One day for this month to get finished. If we could believe the words of scientists because of their statistics and they came to television and began talking without shame. Oh, by the end of this month 5,000 will be dead. Let me ask you, sir. Let me ask you. Can you come to the television tomorrow and tell the people how many people are dead? Because we are there. We are there kicking alive. Kenya will not be controlled in a laboratory. We shall control it through our knees. We pray and we cancel those words. You said it. We went against it. We blocked the, the words. We killed your words. We destroyed your words. Today is 29th. How many people? Not even 15. What am I trying to say here? Fear was being released. Our God will protect this nation. Our God will protect the people in the remote, the Maasai, the Durumas, the Giriamas, the Dorobos, who don't have any medication there. God is able to protect them. God will protect the borders of this nation. We are safer. We are safe and we bless the Lord. So, don't tell us fear. Tell us hope. I want to pray for those who are fearful. You've been afraid of one thing or the other, apart from Corona. Anything. Kneel down where you are. Just kneel down. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you to the rescue of that brother, that sister. Rescue them from the spirit of fear. Set them free from the torment of the spirit of fear. I rebuke you, demon of fear. Spirit of fear operating in the mind, in the heart of that man. I rebuke you I command the captive to be set free. Any man, any woman under the captive of fear, I set you free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord protect you. May the hand of the Lord sustain your family. May the hand of the Lord release your blessing in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for all the viewers worldwide. And I believe, Lord, you are doing something through this internet. It's not in vain, Lord. A miracle is taking place. I honor you, Jesus. I give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can celebrate your victory and go about speaking 
what I've told you. This is the word of God. This is now the word of God. It's not what you've been listening. This is what you've been listening to through, through this. Is the real word of God. I received from the Lord. I brought it to you. I believe you have been blessed. Now, now that you are blessed, it's not a struggle for us to worship God. It's not a problem for us to worship God. I want to take a good offering and a good offering and worship the Lord through our pay bill number. It's 550-797-5507. Seven nine seven. God bless you. I love you. I love you. And God bless you. Let's meet again. Shalom.